Hey friends, if you're one of those people who mixes in a small bedroom or an apartment, and you're either not allowed to treat your room or can't afford acoustic treatment, then this video is for you. If this is you, then you likely mix on headphones because your room has so many acoustical issues. So in this video, we're gonna explore some free ways to make mixing on headphones more effective and translate better, meaning that no matter what headphones you use, if you go through the steps that I show you here, your mixes won't sound drastically different coming out of other speakers and other systems than they sound in your headphones. Let's do it. Hey, so I actively recognize that this is YouTube and therefore you're probably wanting to get directly to the workflow. How do I do this, man? Come on, give me the goods. Totally respect that. It's actually right here. You can skip right to it. But for those of you that are willing to stick it out and watch this whole video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down what the Harman Curve target actually is and why it might be beneficial for you to use this type of headphone calibration so that your mixes sound better. I also want to warn you that there are some pitfalls that you can run into, and if you calibrate your headphones incorrectly, it's actually going to make your life harder instead of easier. So I recommend that you watch this whole video because it'll help you understand what the key steps are that you can utilize in order to make your headphone listening experience more enjoyable. All right, let's get it. So in case you didn't know, um, Hurricane Helene ripped through my hometown of Asheville in Western North Carolina, and it left so much destruction in its wake that I actually had to leave town for a while because we have a little toddler and things were just kind of too complicated to stick around for a bit. What this forced me to do was to work way more on my headphones than to work on speakers. And if you know me at all, I actually greatly prefer to work on speakers, even though if you've watched this YouTube channel, you always see me with headphones. That's because, you know, I'm using a mic and I need to have direct sound, but I greatly prefer to mix on speakers. So because I was away from my studio, this forced me to have to use my headphones and therefore figure out a bunch of ways to calibrate my headphones so that they presented audio in kind of the same way as my speakers work. And so when it comes to rabbit holes, I'm the Easter bunny. Now, if you look up recommended levels for how loud you should be listening when you're mixing music, usually you'll get recommendations between 80 and 85 dB SPL, which is very loud. And if you've ever taken a test where you've busted out an SPL meter, like a, a crude one on a cell phone, and you've turned your headphones up until it's about 80 or 85 decibels SPL, and then you've put that on your head, <laughs> you've probably been like, wow, that's super loud. But if you take speakers and you have a treated room and you crank those up to about 80 or 85 decibels, you'll notice that it's a little bit more pleasing to listen to. And not only is it more pleasing, but you'll also notice that if you're listening on speakers, you can actually work longer without fatigue setting. In. Now, there's a lot of contributing factors to why this is the case, but one of the main things to understand is that when you listen to speakers in a room, your ears and the way your head is shaped and your shoulders and all of your body <laughs> contribute to how you actually perceive a good sounding, quote unquote, listening situation, okay? So because the shape of your ears and your body is so involved in the process of listening to speakers when they're in a room playing at you, you're very used to how that goes and how that sounds. But when you put on headphones, all of a sudden, what are we doing? We're eliminating the body from the equation, okay? All that we have is, yes, the shape of the ears, but also the sound is not coming at us. It's not being localized, okay? So enter what's called the Harman target curve. Now, the Harman target curve is the result of a bunch of research done by the audio manufacturer Harman to basically try to make it so that when you're listening on headphones with the Harman target curve, it'll be much more like how it is when you listen to music coming out of speakers, okay? So taking a look at these four different measurements throughout the years of, of the Harman target curve, we can see that there's a consistent bump around 3K. And this is due to the fact that when you're listening to sounds in a room, there is an ear canal resonance around 3K. This is just what happens when you hear sounds, right? Your, your ear just does this, okay? And so when you listen to music with a flat frequency response in headphones, when this resonance isn't here, it sounds very unnatural to you because you're just not used to listening to sounds that way, right? Another thing that we can notice is that there is a bump down here in the low end, and a lot of mixing engineers who use the Harman curve are doing this because headphones have trouble making very low frequencies, especially uh, dynamic headphones that are kind of old school, right? It's just hard for them to make the sub low end. So you can see down here that we've got this bump, okay? Uh, and we can also see that the uh, treble kind of tails 
off here way up high. And that's because when, at least for in my case, when I'm listening to really, really high treble frequencies, especially when they're panned, it's really unnatural for me to hear them super hard panned to the left and to the right. So long story short, EQing headphones to resemble this Harman curve helps the audio sound more natural to you as if it was coming from speakers in a room. So pretty wild, right? And check this out. If you look at the frequency response of these popular pro headphones, you'll notice that they all have a similar bump in the upper mid range. And it's not that these companies are incompetent. It's that in order for you to perceive what might be construed as a flat frequency response or a pleasing frequency response, you need that bump, right? And the Harman curve steps in and does even more for you because if you look at the low end of all these headphones, they all struggle in the deepest low end. So again, EQing your headphones to the Harman target curve will allow you to experience sound and music coming out of your headphones as if you were sitting in a room, a well-tuned room, listening to flat frequency response speakers. I hope that's clear now. So believe it or not, the Harman curve is only one of many different target curves that headphone manufacturers are trying to make the frequency response of their headphones resemble. And now there are many companies coming forward with different solutions for EQing your headphones to different target curves. Uh, there's Sonarworks Sound ID, there is Real Phones, there is the Slate VSX headphone system, and any one of those solutions could be great solutions for you. But what I wanted to show you is a free way to calibrate your headphones to the Harman curve using an awesome GitHub site and a convolution reverb. And of course, Ableton comes with hybrid reverb, which is a convolution reverb. Let's do it. As you can see here, I'm using an Ableton hybrid reverb. And you might be thinking, dude, you're using a reverb for headphone correction? Yes, I am. And let me show you why. So there's this awesome website by this guy, Jocko Passanen. I might be totally butchering his name, but what's so cool about this uh, auto EQ GitHub site is that this is a gigantic database of headphone measurements. And there are uh, folks on here that have measured that are from huge websites like Rtings here, Super Review. There's so many different headphone measurements here that you can see of all these different headphones. Likely the headphones that you use are in this list, okay? And what's so cool is about this is that if you find your headphones, let's go ahead and find my favorite profile for the Hi-Fi Man Ananda headphones, which is what the ones that I'm wearing right now, are by this guy. Oratory 1990. And if you go to the over ear, which is this kind of headphone over ear, right? And we go down to the Hi-Fi Man Anandas. Check this out. You have this interesting readme. And what this readme shows us is what the Harman target is. Okay, so this is the Harman target, the one in blue. And then what the equalization will be in order to achieve that target curve. Okay, now check this out. Not only that do you have this, but you also have, uh, you can use a parametric shelving EQ. So you could use EQ8 if you take the first five filter uh, recommendation, or you could use like Fab Filter Pro Q to do all 10. You can do that, but check this out. There's a much, much easier way. If you also look over here, let's go ahead and, and pull this out a little bit. Check this out. We actually have impulse responses as wave files here that you can use to correct your headphones. So this was one of those aha moments for me. I was like, wait a minute. I could use a convolution reverb to calibrate my headphones. And so I was like, okay, let's give this a try. So here is a sample of white noise and I'm gonna use a Pro-Q uh, 3 to look at the white noise coming in. And if I put the analyzer on the following settings, let's just go ahead and look at the settings. If I put my analyzer on these settings, we'll get a pretty flat response. Take a look. Now, before I show you how to do this, let me first prove that this is uh, accomplishing the task at hand. Okay, so I'm just gonna play this white noise. Let's turn it all the way down. I'm just gonna play this white noise and then enable and disable this hybrid reverb. And as you can see, we've got a boost in the low end and we've got a little spike right here at 3K and then another smaller spike here at six. You can see that this is actually calibrating this white noise to play the Harman curve. So I'll go ahead and go back to my analyzer here and click the freeze button. And if we take a look at this along with the Harman curve, you'll see, wow, that is actually yielding the intended result. So going back to this amazing GitHub site, all you gotta do 
is find your headphones, okay, whatever headphones you use somewhere in this database. And in the Ananda's case, there were actually multiple different measurements uh, for the Harman target curve. But I went with this one, the Hi-Fi Man Ananda minimum phase 48 kilohertz wave file, and then you click on it, okay? And then you go over here to these dotted lines and you choose download, okay? So then you download that file. Then you go to Ableton and you grab yourself a hybrid reverb. So I'll just drag and drop this over here. Now, you have to be so careful here. You have to disable basically everything. First of all, we don't need any pre-delay. There's no reason for that, okay? We need to turn this on just the convolution mode, okay? This is a convolution reverb, meaning it can take impulse responses, right? We need to turn off any of the time processing. We need to turn off any of the EQ. We need to make the dry wet all the way wet, right? And now, we make sure, <laughs> we have set this reverb up to simply play whatever's playing into the reverb through the impulse response. So then all you got to do is find your audio file, open up my downloads, this download, drag it and drop it. Okay. And there we go. So let's go ahead and test it out. I'm going to play the white noise without the target curve and then with it. It really is that simple. Okay. Now you have to be very, very, very careful. If you have any of these options ticked on, you're going to be altering the sound to the degree where you might not get the intended result, which is to hear your music in a calibrated way, okay? You have to be careful. Now, if you doubt yourself at all when it comes to all this, I am providing you a free download of a hybrid reverb uh, with all of the options turned off, so you can just download this reverb and easily put stuff in. Now, if you don't have hybrid reverb, you don't have Ableton Suite, or you don't even have Ableton at all, you can download the free Melda Production bundle, and you can get the M Convolution EZ. And if I drag this in here, okay, and then I choose Custom Path, right? And then I go to the, the folder that I downloaded everything on. Let's see if I can find it. <laughs> you can actually load up your target curve here and then use this Convolution Reverb. Now, something to point out is that the convolution reverb will normalize the IR loudness in order to achieve kind of the maximum level. And if you turn this off, it'll actually sound a bit quieter than hybrid reverb will. But at the end of the day, the target curve is the same thing, okay? It's still the same curve. So that's a way that you can use a free plugin to do that. So when you're using this workflow, you're gonna to wanna to put your convolution reverb, uh, in this case, the hybrid reverb, on your main track or your master track, okay? Because you're gonna be listening through it. But do not, do not, do not forget that when you go to actually export your mix, when you're done mixing, you have to turn this off. Otherwise, you're gonna imprint this custom curve on the output of your track. You don't want it to actually export through this. This is just for monitoring purposes, okay? This is for you listening through this curve to make the decisions you wanna make mixing wise. And then you need to bypass this when you actually go to export, okay? So don't forget that. So for me, when I'm using the Harman target curve, I find myself being able to crank my headphones up and listen for a little bit longer than I normally would. And that's the problem that I've found that the Harman curve helps with. It doesn't necessarily solve the fatigue issue, but it helps with it. I think it's also fair to point out that there is another issue with headphones, of course, and that's that if you hear a sound in a room, it's always accompanied by reverb, right? Uh, sound localization is something that we have evolved and adapted to do over the course of our evolution. And it's really unnatural uh, to put these cans on your head and all of a sudden have sounds coming, you know, at you like directly from the side. And maybe you've had the experience of hearing something hard panned and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, like uh, it's disorienting, right? And that can also be fatiguing to listen to for a long time because it can uh, do things in our brains that we're just not used to hearing. And so this is actually the problem of what's considered crosstalk. And so when two speakers are playing in a room, uh, you'll always hear some of the left channel in the right ear and some of the right channel in the left ear. I'm actually working on my own solution, a free solution for crosstalk issues. But for right now, you can actually download uh, different plugins that help with the crosstalk issue. Now, does that mean that you have to introduce a crosstalk solution in order to be able to mix on headphones? Of course not. You can mix on headphones without worrying about crosstalk at all. Just like you don't even need to use the Harman curve to be able to effectively mix on headphones. You really don't need anything. This space is full of a lot of very opinionated people. But at the end of the day, and after a lot of experience, 
I have learned that our brains are amazing things. We can adapt to all kinds of different crazy situations when it comes to listening. If you get used to what your listening space sounds like, you get used to your headphones, you get used to your system in general, you can get so much done just by understanding the tendencies of your room and the tendencies that you have when it comes to mixing. So don't get caught up in all the arguments on the internet. Just give different things a try and try to set it up so that you can mix for a long period of time at the volume level that you set with the frequency response curve that feels natural to you to listen to. So there it is, a free and simple way to calibrate your headphones to the Harman target curve without having to spend any money at all. Now remember, down in the description is where I've left not only directions, but links to that zeroed out hybrid reverb, links to the GitHub site where you can download the calibration file, and then a bunch of different links to the various and assorted resources that I use to create this video. Also, if you like my teaching style, I offer insanely robust Ableton online courses that go over the four various and assorted different ways that you can use the software. Songwriting and composition, mixing and mastering, sound design and synthesis, and of course, live performance and live looping. So if you wanna check those out, those are also down in the description. I hope that this was a useful and inspiring lesson. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. Much love, everybody. I'll see you next time.